All right, well, let's get right to it. Welcome to episode 32. Gonna be a little bit rushed in this one because I'm a little bit rushed in real life. There is no 30 seconds Alaska segment this time because I spent uh, most of the last shift helping to train a new group of pilots and didn't have much time to take pictures. But the reason I'm rushed is because this two weeks at home, I wasn't really at home. About eight hours after getting home, I was back at SeaTac taking a flight to Atlanta, Georgia. I picked up a North American T-28C built in 1957. I'll show a few pictures here while I'm running my mouth. Then after the intro here, I will show 30 seconds across the lower 48 as I went from Georgia to, what did I do there? Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington. Ferrying the T-28 involved getting a type rating. It used to just be called a letter of authorization. Now it's an experimental type rating uh, because the aircraft has more than a thousand horsepower. Got that out of the way, ferried the airplane the rest of the way since it is successfully parked in central Washington in my uncle's hangar. And now I have about four days that I can get some work done on this. And so, here we go. So here's that, 30 seconds in the continental US. And the Kid Fox related content is that I stopped in Las Cruces, New Mexico on my first overnight stop out of Texas. And I got to spend the night at the home of Brett Hahn, who's the importer that I went through to uh, get my engine. Got a tour of Brett's hangar the next day. He had a Werner nine cylinder and also a three cylinder. And you see the three cylinder and you just want to design an airplane to make it have a job. In my case, I look at some of the models I've built in a Eastbourne monoplane would be super cool. It had the Anzani three-cylinder engine on it originally. That was an airplane from about 1913. Um, I think they look cool. Could be an Antoinette. Uh, Brett actually has a project that he's going to put one of these engines on, but he swore me to secrecy, so some other day. Anyway, so I'm going to dismount the camera and show you what I'm up to now and see what kind of progress I can make over the next few days. Well, where I left off right before I ran off to work last time was having done these uh, tapes over the bottom. No sooner had I published that video, a guy from Europe somewhere, I'm pretty sure it was Germany, uh, was able to take his Kit Fox uh, to Lanitz, which is the manufacturer of Oratex, and cover his Kit Fox during a workshop. Dang, I wish I could have done that. Anyway, lucky dude, but he saw these tapes in the bottom. He said they don't recommend should clarify. Not that they don't recommend you do it, but it's not required. So again, I'd rather have them on here, get a little bit of practice, and think I needed them later on down the road, but uh, you can skip this part. But I still do need the uh, tapes along the edges, and that's what I'm gonna work on next. Once these edge tapes are along the overlap seam, because again, I covered the bottom, then the side, need a finishing tape over the top of that, then I'll be able to poke the holes for landing gear, Put the gear back on, flip this thing over, and get it upright. So the tape I'm gonna use on the edge, my thought was I was gonna use this same width that I have right here. I'll definitely use that back here, as they say, but when I trim these, tapes are a little bit short, and you know, who's gonna know other than the grasshoppers that I run over the top of, but if I do this tape right here, it's gonna leave a little bit of a gap kind of unsightly to me. I'm just trying to make it as nice as possible. So one thing I want to do is have the tape go over these landing gear fittings. And these two are the same. They're not a uh, mirror image on the other side. They're just the same everywhere I put them. And so I cut that out. So I got this shape which I can transfer. Did some practice and I put it on a piece of the Oratex uh, finishing tape and this was just for practice of course I'm doing it with one hand and it's not gonna fit very good but get the idea 
and this was just practice on a scrap what I need to do now is figure out where I'm gonna shift it in this direction and then get the two of them this far apart and then figure out what I'm gonna do around this fitting because mm, no because there's no way I could get this to button over the top of this piece and over the top of that without having some kind of a ugly ugly scrap and considering that you want all tape overlaps to go so that they point aft I'm gonna actually cover this tube get up here as far as I can and that one I will use this width and that one I will use this width of material and then I'll probably use a piece of the wider stuff this is I think three inch and I'll do this piece here there's some other place I need to make it look nicer I'm gonna put a doubler around here probably not required but I'm gonna do it anyway I'm gonna take a piece of this tape and I'm gonna cut it in a semicircle and then poke a hole in it something like this width so what I'm about to practice doing is taking some of this tape and use circle template uh, two inch of course this isn't gonna line up very good because I'm doing this one-handed I'll be able to trace around make a uh, full radius and then I got these Chinese hole punches which can work in I don't know le leather it probably claims 20 gauge steel which means it's probably almost good enough to poke a couple holes in some polyester fabric I figure a 7 16th hole over a 3 8 tube will leave a just enough clearance around the outside that it should fit nicely and then I got used to use these back in high school doing silk screening it's a swivel knife so that the blade trails the direction you pull it and I can cut out some of the shapes that are going to go around here with that wish me luck get a little bit of practice right now today is kind of burnt it's uh, getting pretty late in the afternoon and I've got stuff to do at home so I'm going to practice a little bit not put anything on the airplane come back tomorrow and hammer out these uh, two sides what else do I have to do I have to come up with a ground plane a uh, three inch disc I think it's bigger than that I gotta check that out anyway for a run at ELT antenna you're supposed to have some kind of a ground plane so I'm gonna put one there I'll cut a second one I've got some already some white paint which will match this Oratex certainly good enough for the bottom of the aircraft and then uh, of course I still have the header tank which is just on the other side of this piece of fabric right here I gotta poke that hole bond those uh, pieces in place to be able to sump my fuel tanks and real quick like before this SD card goes dead here's my guinea pig piece of material you see what I did is I drew on here now of course if Lars ever saw this he'd be flipping out because he should not draw with a sharpie pen on the Oratex, but what I did is I drew it on the backing material that's going to peel off. So let's try this hole punch idea. Yep. Butter failure. And not too ugly. It's going to require some practice. Peel this off, cover that up. And I just got some work to do. That's why we practice, because this would probably end up being a ball up mess. I have to take a sharp knife around the edge here, trim off where I pushed it through. The hole in the Ortec 6000 is a little bit undersized, so besides there being a little bit of adhesive on there, I need to make that smooth. Need to make this with a perfectly round hole because I don't have that right now. That'll cover that up. Then I'm just going to cover it, cut it, and then the other edge tape is going to go flying by here and should look halfway nice. That's the theory. I did get some of the edge tape trimmed up and on here and here. And then, of course, I have. Where did I put them? Here we go. Again, steal an idea from uh, probably Geek and some of the other people aircraft spruce these plastic things I'm gonna cut them 
and I fit them over where the rudder cables came out. So I have this doubler that cleaned up the hole that I made around here and the uh, rudder cable exits and those little uh, shrouds will cover up all that mess. Um, they went doubler stuck pretty good. However, along the way I managed to drop my iron and actually it was just on the ground and I snagged the cord and it fell over on its face which it's done I don't know half a dozen times at least and it's dead. I thought maybe if I let it cool completely and plug it back in it'll start working but it's toast so I need to get another one of these. This side had the iron and it was uh, when I was moving the cords to the other side that I knocked it over so the other side I did with just the heat gun and I'm also chasing a wrinkle it's a pucker loose spot on the side of the fuselage on the other side and I gotta think about which side I did first yep it was the other side where I had a whole lot of fabric which I had to shrink out so I might be up against the limit as to how much you can shrink out and hopefully not hopefully I got a little bit more room left and uh, it's gonna take an iron to do that so I'm gonna run home see how quickly I can get a new iron and I did work on the way off camera down at the where the lift strut where the lift strut attach fitting goes on and have a shape figured out to go around that lift strut attach fitting that then the tape coming from the forward end is going to overlap and that should work out pretty good so I spent a while messing around with this to perfect this shape I transferred it over to masking tape which is on the uh, not the backing side but the fabric side that's why I chose to do that and then I used this uh, cutting mat, swivel knife, and straight edge. Now I'm going to peel all this off and we're going to see how it fits on this side. And this piece is long enough to go all the way to the back of the plane. Alright, I managed to secure a new iron, exactly like the one I had from Ortex, uh, Better Fabrics I should say. And I even managed to save this silicone protective sheet from here, set on 90 degrees Celsius. I have an end trimmed around this thing, hopefully that's going to work out. And now I'm just going to start sticking it on uh, full length. I guess, uh, wish me luck. My best not to trip over that iron. This is uh, what I'm looking at so far. I've got it on here. A couple things I'm going to show you right now. There's a little bit of change, a transition, some welded material, so it's got a little bit of that pucker. So again, anytime you start getting that, stop what you're doing. This is a good place to use the heat gun instead of the iron um, because it's going to allow that to shrink the material up and then I can feather it into the heat, uh, excuse me, the felt blade. So I'm going to work my way back forward for this mess. Hopefully that comes out like I had in mind. Uh, also around this piece of weld bead right here. Again, heat gun and the felt blade to work that in. But so far, I'm um, looking pretty good.
Okay, so this tape on the, it's going to be the right side of the fuselage is on. Um, I have it coming forward, this edge right here, and uh, trims just the forward edge of the weld bent. Up in the front, I'll be able to make one from the front to come back and overlap, but other than that, this came out pretty good. Well, I've been added on warning. I came back, did the it's upside down, so it's confusing. Other side of the fuselage, I have both of these edge tapes done all the way to the back. I won't be able to see it. Took care of that wrinkle. The stripes you see are actually just a reflection in the light, so that extra pucker took care of it by the new iron turned up to 160. So that gets me up to the lift strut attached fitting. Sorry, no GoPro today, just the phone. And so now I'm going to do these two pieces of forward tape, and then I've already poked the holes for the landing gear and did my layout with the masking tape. Slight correction to something I said before that the cutouts are all the same. So at least for the Kit Fox 5, the forward ones are about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Looks like they got an extra washer welded onto them, and these are an eighth inch. And I already cut the holes, put the landing gear back on. Super stretch goal for today would be to get that back on. However, even though I poked a hole for the tail wheel way back there, I elected to upgrade from the aluminum spring, which is a perfectly good tail wheel uh, spring anyway. And this is a Alaskan Bush Wheels. I know it is the Scott 3200, but a uh, great tail wheel. It's been on most of the airplanes that I've owned. Anyway, I ordered a T3. So it's going to show up after I leave kind of uh, push today I'm gonna to get these two pieces on declare victory because that'll put me in a position where I can put the landing gear on whether I do that today or not and whether I flip it back over or not is not super important because at least that means that's the first thing I'm gonna do uh, when I get back all right looks like a cave in here with this light the way the camera compensates for that anyway so I did get the uh, tape both right and left side aft of the lift shut attach fitting and I got this one up here, not super happy with the way it came out. And given how much of the day I have left to prepare to go to work tomorrow, super early, I'm going to call it. A, I'm either going to come back and finish this tape and then put the landing gear back on, or I'm going to peel this off and start over just from this lift stud attached fitting forward. Put a little bit of pressure on myself to get both sides done. That's one of those lessons that when you put pressure on yourself, you're just going to start making mistakes and certainly if I kept going with the other piece I'd incorporate even more mistakes so I'm gonna stop which means it's a wrap for this episode thanks for coming along next month for sure tape landing gear flip it back over and that's gonna be the first test fit of the Verner radial so stay tuned